Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest. We're here in the AutoZone parking lot. I'm here like several times a day. And uh, well, I was just coming to pick up some O-rings because we were going to go uh, put some O-rings on a Honda power steering pump, which is a super common issue. Um, they said, hey, my power steering is not working last week. I went and diagnosed it and um, they thought they were going to need a new power steering pump. I said, you know what? We topped it off with fluid because it hadn't been working forever, but it was low on fluid. I topped it off and it was pushing a little bit at the very extreme of the turning. It was, uh, you know, starting to whine, but it may just not have been all the way full of fluid. And I said, hey, it's pushing some fluid. So before we replaced the power steering pump, I could see that it was leaking around those gaskets. There's, uh, you know, power steering fluid around that pump on the front of that engine. I said, let's replace these gaskets first. So we're gonna go do that and see if that fixes the problem. Fingers crossed it fixes the problem. If we need to replace the pump in the future, you know, so be it. But we're gonna try to uh, see if these gaskets fix the problem first and maybe bleed it because there might be some air in that system. That may be why it was uh, starting to whine at the very extreme of its turning radius. But we'll head over there and um, we'll get this job going. All right, uh, it's gonna drip a little bit, especially if that reservoir is full, which it was last time, but if they've been driving around a little bit, maybe it's empty. It's only been about a week though, so I doubt it. And I've got this drip panel put underneath there. I've got the little, it's just two O-rings, pretty simple to replace. Um, if I remember correctly, there's like a 10 millimeter bolt holding one of the hoses in that's actually a little difficult to get to, but nothing like ridiculously crazy. So we'll get over there and see if we can just do this real quick without any issues, but if there are issues, yeah, you'll find out. All right, there's the area in question. And the first O-ring is on this hose up here. No big deal, you can see two 10 millimeters, but the this one's the one that actually has that 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom of this hose that's actually a little difficult to get to. So we'll get to it regardless, and uh, that's how I remembered these being. So no big deal, we'll pop this one off. The level's almost all the way full, so maybe I'll just put a pair of pliers and pinch that hose off there. Before I take it off, I may try and do this high pressure side first quickly. And hopefully, I've got my drip pan under there, but hopefully not too much comes out. Okay, as long as I pull these out, I should be fine bolt wise because it's still pushed down in there. It's got a little uh, neck that that O-ring sits around that's down inside its socket. And I'm fine to take these bolts out. I will get that gasket ready. I believe this is the smaller one. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. This is the kit. I don't know why they put in such a big box. But basically just two O-rings. Super common, pretty much every parts store has them in stock. Okay, and just pop this out. Okay, that's the black one. Let me go get a pair of picks, actually. Put that back in. Okay, I've got a pick to get this off real quick. Just plug it with my finger while I do this. And yeah, this gasket's like completely flat. 
So that's not a good, I can't really twist this hose to show you. Maybe you can see there just how smashed up that gasket is so flat and hard. So see if I can get this out without stabbing my finger, that would be nice. go upwards to prevent that. Man, that's hard. I think it's brittle. Yeah, just popped it, broke it right there. Just don't want those pieces falling in. Yeah, that thing's super brittle. I'll show you when I'm done, but I'm not gonna be able to grab the camera here for a moment. in put that back Clean up my fingers in this little area with a rag here and we we'll clean that up not too many drips there so that's pretty good the other ones the like one I'm worried about though dripping okay this up but the problem with that lower one is it's too close to the hose to get a ratcheting wrench on there and so they don't make like box and swiveling head wrenches I mean I'm sure somebody does but I don't have a pair and it's not like a common tool that would work well um, I think I may be able to get like a really shallow socket in there so let me oh I don't even have my socket rail with my shallow sockets here with me um, yeah, let me see what I come up with, but I've got an idea. Let's see if it works. Okay, here's my bright idea. It may not work, but I've got this little bit driver. Titan makes this, it's pretty cool. And I've got this little 10 millimeter bit that goes like on the end of those little bit drivers or screwdrivers. And this may not work because this is a little long. If this is short enough though, I may be able to get in there and get that loose. Not. We'll be back to the drawing board here in a moment. My guess is it's a little too long. Yeah, it's gonna be a little too long. But oh well, at least I get to show you that cool little tool. This is one of my favorites. I put this actually in my toolkit. This is the first time I've opened it, but once it's open, I put it in my little Duralast toolkit. Um, with the little bits because that comes in handy so many times when you're in a tight space and need to put a screw in or something like that. I think if I play a little bit of like Tetris here to get this wire out of the way, I can give myself enough room to move the wrench down here. And last time I think this is where I got stuck on one of these. And it's been so long since I've done one of these, I don't remember what I did. But if that wire's there, it doesn't really give you enough room to move this wrench, but I've got it on there now. It should give me enough space to pop it loose. And we're like one of those, one of those situations where we're gonna go quarter of a turn at a time here but that's all we need to get it loose and getting that back in is going to be quite a bit harder I believe you know I could you could take the power steering pump out or probably a few other solutions but I don't want to do all that if it's not necessary all right well I'll just quarter turn it at a time and uh, update you when I'm done got it out but um, yeah, before I pull it out, I'm probably gonna grab right here with a pair of pliers for vice grips. I have some hose clamp pliers specifically for that in my other big truck, but we're still waiting on the engine for that. I don't know when that's gonna be done. It was supposed to be two weeks and it's been almost two months. So uh, let's see if I talk enough and you don't have to wait around because I can tight loosen this by hand. Yeah, you can't see anything. I can't even see anything, all by feel. It's about out. It's gonna, like I said, it's gonna be a lot trickier to get that in there without dropping it and losing it, but let's see if I can get it out there. There we go. And you know what? I may just do the same deal here and pull it out and just plug it with my finger. 
Oh, yeah, came pouring out. There's this other O-rings on the inside of this. Got left behind. There it is. That one doesn't look quite as brutal as the other one. It's not. But, see, I raised this up past the reservoir. Higher than the reservoir, then it's not gonna leak out super fast. And we'll slap that back in there. Bingo. All right, let's get a rag. Clean up a little bit here so I can, my hands aren't quite as slippery when I'm trying to put that bolt back in there. It's not gonna make a huge difference, but every little bit counts. Okay, sliding my hands around the bottom to see if I can keep a hold of that screw without dropping it. I wish I could see what I was doing. All right, you know what, let's do this. That may work a little bit better. And, and don't lose more fluid, but. You're losing so much fluid, maybe lost it all. all right, that's why we have that trip paint under there. Thought maybe I could do it without losing a ton of fluid, but pretty much emptied that reservoir. There's just a little bit left now. It's screwing in or not. Well, at least I've got some cleaner. We'll clean everything up. Just consider it a moderate flush of the power steering fluid, but it wasn't very dirty, probably because it leaks out so frequently. Okay, and we'll turn this bad boy back on. Righty tidy. wire back in its place put the reservoir back in its place and we'll top this off and we may have to bleed this so let's go get a funnel and some cleaner okay yeah so this orange one is pretty fine still flexible not a big deal not not too big of a deal this one though the black one was flat and brittle you can just see how cracked that is and just the flatness itself is probably what was causing that to leak so hopefully this fixes the issue like i said it was pushing a little bit of fluid you know it was circulating actually quite well in there and at the extreme of its turn radius it started to whine but we'll see you know that could be air just because it was so empty for so long i'm curious to see here if we can get this solved so go ahead and top it off and uh, give it a few minutes to let the bubbles rise out of there before i start it up and push those in to the rack and pinion Okay, here's this little bit driver I was talking about. I like to put it just right in here in my toolkit. And, uh, you know, super nice little uh, small bit driver to get into tight spaces there. Got some extra bits here. I'll probably just put those in my screwdriver drawer. And uh, let's get this topped off first before I keep talking so that air gets out of there and I'm not sitting here for 10 minutes waiting on that as the last thing. I may take this reservoir loose again and just pick it up so that this hose doesn't have a bend in it so air might not be trapped in here. Let's give it its best chance of getting any air out before I start it and push it down. Let's see, like this. I just pick that up a little bit. Get some air out of there. But you want to be careful with these. Every parts store has these reservoirs as well. All the Hondas for a long time used the same one of these. And, uh, if you pull on them too hard, you'll break off these little um, outlets on them. You ask me how I know. You learned that lesson once. All right, let's kind of start cleaning up some of this fluid down there. 
brake clean works pretty well. My drip pan under there is pretty full of fluid, so it's a good thing it was under there. I didn't want to mess up their driveway. Let that dry up and do it again. All right, now I'm going to leave the drip pan under there for first because if there's a bunch of air in here, this is bound to foam up and spill over. Don't want that to happen. But if it does, then that drip pan will be under there. Hopefully, I've let this sit for a few minutes. Not too much air came up, but hopefully uh, we can get something, uh, some air out of here. Maybe. All right, dirty clean, so I'm fine sitting in here. All right, here we go. Okay. All right, yeah. That's a lot better than it was last time, but I did fill up that reservoir all the way this time. Doesn't sound like it's foaming up because you would hear it whining. And she said, the owner of the van, so that she would park in the back of the parking lot because that's how bad the power steering was. It completely didn't work. That way she knew she'd be able to, you know, drive straight out without having to turn because it was too hard to turn the wheel. So this is a almost one finger that's pretty normal for a sedan or a big van like this. On my big trucks, actually, I can turn them with one finger, but that's way different. Uh, yeah, we've got full range of motion to the extremes in the steering wheel. We'll check that reservoir, make sure it's not foaming up, but this is going to be a job well done. Well, assuming it doesn't leak, but it doesn't need to be replaced. Nice. Yeah, that's, that fluid circulate nicely. You can see there. Yeah, we got movement in there. That's awesome. And that's all cleaned up. And that's that pan. I'll show you that fluid is in a second. I'll empty it out. Vehicle owner super happy. So that's awesome. That always, uh, that feels good. And this is a job well done. Pro tip. This little keychain my wife gave me for Father's Day one year. Works super good to tighten these little bushings back down on valve covers, covers. Okay. Oh, it'll be so nice to have this Yeah, and that's all that oil that would have got on your driveway. So I'm glad I put this down. Oh, oil or it's power steering oil. It's, a, it's in oil, it's fluid, but yeah, I was thinking, I was like, I could probably do it without. I'm like, I'll put this on there just in case, but that's a lot of oil. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. That's nice to get that taken care of for them. Hopefully you could see a little bit of that. Looks like the screen might be smudged. Okay, hopefully that wasn't super blurry. Otherwise that's going to become a bonus video that I put out if I have had a busy week or something. But anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, super satisfying. If you want to support helping out the channel, helping out uh, fix people's cars who are uh, you know, a little bit under pressure more than others, I can give them a discount. If you want to become a channel member to help support those, kind of a fixing it forward. Usually about once a month, I fix somebody's car for, you know, the cost of parts or for free. And uh, a lot of times throughout the month, when somebody's just a little bit less fortunate than others, I'll give them a pretty good discount. And uh, channel member members really make that possible. So consider becoming a channel member. There's a link and uh, right around the top of the description. Check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode.